us, dear Lord. And so right now, Father God, we say thank you once more. Thank you, God, for this beautiful Monday that, that we are able, that we are ready, that we are alive, Father God. It is a blessing to us, oh Lord. And so on tonight, we say thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us, dear Lord God, once more on Bible study that we're able to, uh, to invite a friend, that we're able, Father God, to bring somebody that don't know you, that may know you, Father God. We say thank you for that, dear Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, for allowing us, dear Lord God, to have the access, the privilege, dear Lord, that many others may not have, but you blessed us with that. So, Father, we don't take that for granted. So, on tonight, we say thank you, Father God, for allowing us to even have electricity, for allowing us to even have internet, Father God, so that we're able to come on the line and be able to pray with one another, fellowship with one another. And so, on tonight, we say thank you, Heavenly Father. There is no one like you, Elohim. And right now, Father, we ask that you dwell upon each and every single person that is on here tonight and that we are ready and not distracted to receive your word on tonight. And that, Father, your son will be able to, to give us the word exactly how you want him to deliver the message and that everything that come out of him, oh God, it will not be from him. Everything will be coming from you, Holy Spirit. And right now, Father, we set the atmosphere unto the atmosphere that it needs to be right now, oh God. And we can so right now in, in every technical difficulties in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cancel right now every, oh God, spirit of destruction, oh God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cover our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, oh God, and we commit ourselves unto you tonight, oh God, and that we're able to receive your word and that we're able, oh God, to put your word into practice, oh God, and that those words will be a words of revival to us on tonight. And so, Father God, on tonight, we say we are excited to receive you. We are excited to receive your word. And we say thank you in advance, dear Lord. Always allow us to be happy, Father God. We say thank you for that, dear Lord God. Thank you, Father God, because you did not let us, oh Lord God, lose our mind. And so on tonight, we say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we ask that right now, dear Lord God, that you cover your son as he's getting ready to bring forth Bible study on tonight and that you will be with him and that you would allow him and help him to deliver the message, dear Lord. And we say thank you on today for his life. Thank you, dear Lord. May you help him. May you be with him. May you cover him, dear Lord. Have your way on tonight, Heavenly Father. We say thank you on today. Thank you, dear Lord. And we come against every retaliation tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cover ourselves, the prayer line. We cover each and every single member that is on the line right now under the blood of Jesus. And in Jesus' mighty name that we pray on tonight. Amen, amen, amen. All right, you guys, welcome once again each and every single person. So, guys, this is a... welcome, welcome, newbies. A whole lot of new people, welcome, and we are happy um, that we have you guys here with us on tonight. Welcome back, Sister Vanessa. Welcome back, Brother Kirby. Welcome back, Brother Barry, Sister Naps. I'm not sure who iPhone is, but welcome, welcome. Sister Kadia, welcome. Sister Connelly, welcome. Uh, Brother Kareem, welcome. Brother Morris, welcome. Sister Tatiana, Sister Tiki, welcome. At this time, if you have not yet to see your brother or sister, you may go ahead and invite them. Go ahead and shoot them that last 30 second text so that they can come back, so they can come on the line. Thank you, and I pray that you all are ready to receive tonight the word that is about to be, that is about to bring forth from our brother Kirby. Are you excited? Are you happy? Welcome, Sister Christina, right on time. Right on time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, hey, Sister Jen, I did not see you. I'm sorry. Welcome, Sister Jennifer. Go ahead and shoot the last minute text to your brother and sisters so that they can come on once again welcome everyone and let us be excited to receive the word on tonight 
Um, you may come forth, Brother Kirby. All right, good evening, everyone. How are you guys doing? Thank you, Sister um, sister Didi, for praying for the warm welcome. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to the newbies. We are glad to have you guys here on Monday Bible study. Give me a couple seconds so I can share my screen here. God bless you, brother. And also, um, because I'm sharing from my tablet, I will recommend for those of you who know or who can just um, put your phone in landscape mode, in rotation mode, so that way you can have the full screen. If you have iPhone, just scroll down and you see the, you can see the lock with like a circle around it, or, um, an arrow that's like a circle around it. If you click on that and then you just flip the phone, it should give you full screen mode. So that way you can see the full screen here because I am not sharing from my iPhone. You guys got it or is it good? Let me know if you you are muted. All right, one second here, yeah, let me see. You can't unmute yourself? All right, one second, let me fix that real quick. All right, you should be good to go now. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes. yes. All right, great, thank you. All right, perfect. So we are getting very close to the end of this series. Very, very close. So congratulations everyone who made it thus far. And I hope you guys are learning. This has been very beneficial to you. And I hope this will help you in your spiritual journey as far as growing and knowing who the Holy Spirit is your new best friend. So um, as, as usual, we're gonna do a quick, a quick recap. So we can just get right into subject. So recap, week number one, for those who are new, please pay attention so, so you can, you know, kind of grasp a little bit of what we've been covering so far. And this will help you for what is to come. Number one, <clears throat> We spoke about the person of the Holy Spirit, which is who he is, where he came from. And we said that the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is part of, part of the Trinity of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And number two, we saw the nature of the Holy Spirit. The nature of the Holy Spirit we found it in Galatians 5, verse 22, which are the fruits of the Spirit. For instance, the Holy Spirit is patient, is loving, is kind, he has self-control. This is what we studied when it came to the nature of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and then we saw the power, 
of the Holy Spirit. All the miracles, everything that was done, all the miracles that Jesus was performing, the apostles, and we also um, dove back into the Old Testament, and we saw that it was the Holy Spirit who was helping Moses and everything that he was doing and every other prophet in the Old Testament. And number four, we saw the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which is mainly to evangelize, to preach, and to intercede on behalf of the saints and of the church. And we saw number five, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's what, and we established that there was a difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism of fire, we commonly called it, and the baptism of water. And also the baptism of fire, one of the common um, consequences, or I should say effects that happen when somebody is being baptized with the Holy Spirit, they result in the speaking in tongues and prophesying. It's, it's different. It doesn't mean that if you don't speak in tongues and you don't prophesy, that you don't have the Holy Spirit. But those are common manifestations when you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. The language of the Holy Spirit, it is the, 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 the speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues. And the voice of the Holy Spirit is what we saw last. It's how, and what we covered, we covered the example of uh, Moses and I think Samuel. So how you can hear from God sometimes, because God is always speaking. It is a matter of not, are you recognizing his voice? When he speaks, do you think it is your own imagination or can you be still enough to listen to God's voice? And we, and we said that one of the good ways or most effective ways to hear from God is to master stillness. And stillness is not the same as being immobile, which means not moving. You can be laying down and you're not still because your mind is washing. So in other words, we said that stillness, it was the quieting of the soul is when you can master your emotions. So, uh, so far, did I miss anything, guys? For those of you who were here, did I miss anything? No. All right, great. Thank you. So today is going to be a little bit different. Different is not necessarily bad, but today we're going to see a little bit, you know, different aspect because not only, you know, um, I am interested to um, to do the Bible study and teaching, but I also want you guys to know how to do it for yourself. And when you meet other people, you're going to be able to, you know, go into the Bible and do this on your own too, because we believe that we are here to build leaders, not just followers, people who go and follow people, but you are going to be leaders. You all have missions and this is your, this is your training ground pretty much. So we want to teach you how to do it on your own as opposed to just coming and see people do it and get something and go with it. But we encourage you when we teach something, don't just take it for truth. You need to go back and uh, you know examine it, see if what we said is true, if it's accurate according to the Bible. You can ask the Holy Spirit for revelation because that's how you're gonna go. And also if something is said and that you know you have questions or you don't think you know you have a different opinion on it. We would love to hear it. Please don't be quiet. Don't be shy. This is how we can go. Maybe I saw it in a different way. Maybe you can see it in a different light. And this will help everybody grow. So can I please get a reader? This is, um, it's two sections. We have this one. We have that one. It's going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. The first section is cut up to verse 6. And the same reader is going to read verse 7 through 11. Can I get a reader, please? You said from verse 7 to 11? Um, oh, I apologize. From, from, 1 to, from 1 to 11. So I, I was just saying that it was cut off in two. Oh, okay, okay, because I um I can't, I don't see it now. It's I'm looking at the one on the screen. So just from yes. what you said from one to eleven? Yes. Okay. I know I know it says 12. I apologize. Don't worry oh. about it. It was just the rest of the um chapter 12 <laughs> okay. that got pasted into I, it. I can read it. Okay. 
Thank you. Now about it's okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, now about the gifts of the spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know, you know, I'm sorry. I took my glasses off. You know that when you, when you were pagan, pagans, right? Mm -hmm. um, somehow or other you or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus be cursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of spirits, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. Oh, wait, there are different kinds of work. Wait, sorry. There are different kinds of working but in all of them and all in everyone is the same God at work. I hope I read Wait, that right. Can you, can, can you, can you um, go back, start over at, at verse four, please? Go back and start at verse, verse four. Okay. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them, distributes them. Mm -hmm. There are different kind of service, but mm -hmm. the same, but the same Lord. Mm -hmm. There are different kinds of working. Mm -hmm. That's, but right, in that's all, right. Okay, okay. But in all of them and in everyone, is it, it is the same God at work. Yeah, I know it's like, you know, not grammatically, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, concise, like, but, you know, it's old. It's, it's 2,000 years old. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, okay. All right, go ahead. So I have to keep reading, right? Please. Okay. Now to now each okay sorry oh now to each okay. one of a manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good to one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom to another a message of knowledge by by means of the same spirit which means by the same spirit if that's what it's saying to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous power, powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, I'm sorry, and to still another, and to still another the, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this, but it seems a little off. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues, all these are the work of the one of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Hey, thank you so much. And I know this was like, you know, a tough reading. We usually don't read, you know, all these verses like that, but I want it to be in context. So, oh, got it. I oh, understand. All right. Thank you so much. And, and that was ooh, Martin. Thank you. Yeah, Martin. Yeah. Thank you. So one, one thing I want to draw your attention to. Look at look from verse one through three. It says now about the gifts of the spirit, brothers and sisters. I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, pagans, non-believers, people outside in the world, somehow, or other you were influenced. It's like, I don't know how, but it happened. And you guys is saying that I don't understand how it happened, but you guys were influenced and led astray to mute idols. It's saying you guys were idolaters, but now you are part of the church. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So now what I'm going to do today, that's a little bit different. I know we usually just go and dive in into the word, but today we're going to do something different. Who's down for something different? Who's down for something different? Let me know. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat if you guys want something a little bit different today or you guys are old school, you just like it, you know, the, the way we used to do it. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. You guys so down for a history class. Huh? It's going to be short, but it's going to be interesting and insightful. 
And this is what I want you guys to do when you read the Bible. So I'm leading by example. <laughs> no, it is not a trap. It is not a trap. Welcome, Kanali. You in for a treat. Yes, you guys are ready. I like it. Let me see the energy. But what I'm going to do, when you're reading the Bible, I want you to do the exact same thing. So I did it like that so I can show you an example. So I'm going to go back and give you a little bit of background story because it helps a lot to know when you are reading a passage of scripture, who wrote it? Who was the audience? What, what was the condition? What is the subject? Because a lot of times people will just go into a specific chapter, into a specific verse and pick something and they make a whole theology out of it. And never mind the environment, never mind the subject, never mind what was the person speaking about. So a lot of times people take things out of concept, context and make their own story out of it. So I do not want that to happen to you. So let's go back and dive in. And by the way, um, some Bibles that you may have, I have a Z wonder I can share with you guys later. It will give you like a little bit of backstory before you read it. And I also, you know, do research. You can um, go outside and stretch something. I will teach you guys on this later, but now let's stay on task. So the city of Corinth, notice that it was Corinthians. This is a letter to the city of Corinth by the Apostle Paul. Now, what was the city of Corinth? The city of Corinth was located in Greece, more than the Greece, right? It was between Athens, uh, Athens and Sparta. This is Sparta. So this is this guy. It was located right there. It was a seaport. It was like a little bridge island. And one thing that he had, he had a lot of temples. When I'm talking about temples, <clears throat> I am not referring to churches. Not churches. It had demonic temples because these people, they were big on idolatry. They were big, you know, Greeks. They had all these Greek gods and stuff like that. So they were, they had like 12 temples. And one thing that the city was very famous for, there was the temple of Aphrodite. People love to travel, the merchants, people were going anywhere. They like to pass by Corinth to see that temple. Who's familiar with Aphrodite? Can somebody just shoot me a text or just quickly tell me if they know about um, the goddess Aphrodite? Come on, y'all, let's make this interesting. Goddess of love. There you go. Right on spot. Exactly. It was the goddess of love. It's from Greek mythology. A common custom the people of Corinth had, they liked to worship this goddess. People, strangers, pirates, people who, who, who did commerce, they liked to stop by the city of Corinth for that particular temple. They liked to come up and to show love, to worship the goddess. Now you will think it'll be something normal that people just go to church and sit down. They had a service, but no, no, no. This had to be different. Of course, it is the city of Corinth, which was very corrupt back in the days. And now, how do they worship the goddess? Can anybody tell me? Do you guys have any idea how the service took place when people wanted to worship the goddess of love? How did it happen? Just give me like a couple printers. I don't want to just tell the story. It will make it very boring. I want you guys to engage with me. So can anybody tell me how did the people worship the goddess back in that time? We're just taking one person so we can keep this short. A sacrifice. Say that again. A sacrifice sacrifice okay okay anybody else give me give me another one all right tiki say a sacrifice but the story says since it was the goddess of love the way people worship this goddess they will engage in sexual immorality they will stop by the temple and there was priestess in the temple because it's a temple. They have priests and they have priestess. But this priestess, it was more like, you know, when you go to the strip club and it was like a thousand of them. It was male and female. And you're going to see later on in the letter 
that Paul wrote, Paul wrote them why this is important. It was pretty, pretty much modern day prostitutes and they will stop by. Can you imagine being a Christian and you in the city that what's going on is people just going to a temple and engage in sexual immorality as worship to a goddess. What does that say about the city? What does that say about the Christians who are living in that city? Now, bear with me. The city was majorly composed of non-believers, of course, and there was a customary, you know, they would go and worship the goddess. Even the people who are married, even the people who live in the city that are married and have children and a family, it was normal for them to get off work and stop by the God and stop by the temple and to worship the goddess. And they will do like it was so bad that men will take little boys and they will take girls. It was like really bad. And now imagine the city of Corinth, those were mostly Gentiles. By, Gen by Gentiles, they mean non-Jews. All those who were not Jewish, they call them Gentiles. So now this church is mostly Gentiles and they used to be part of that life, right? They used to do the exact same thing, going to the temple and drinking and smoking and, you know, just engaging in all kinds of different things. And now they are Christians. They accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And now they have a new church in the city of Corinth. Can you imagine having a church in this kind of condition? Can you imagine the type of issues they will be facing in such a corrupt society? And one of the reasons that Paul wrote this letter, it was because the new Christians, it's like it was very hard for them to stay in the faith. So now some people in the church, they were found engaging in the same old ways, their former lifestyle. They would, you know, be connected to this type of thing because they had friends, right? When you grow up in the city, you know people, you went to high school with them, you went to college with them, even though now you may change your life. But if you still cool with them, you talk to them and they be like, yo, bro, let's go hang out. And then they found themselves going back to the temple. They found themselves going back into these things. So now the reason Apostle Paul wrote, wrote this letter, it was because there was jealousy, envy, and sexual immorality found in the church. And he was just writing them to tell them, hey, this is how you should live in a society that's corrupt. This is the theme of the, of the book. He was writing them to tell them, hey, this is not good. This is not how you should do it. And I know you guys are new. You guys are used to, you know, the idols, the sexual immorality. But when you accept Christ, you are a new creature and this behavior is not acceptable. So, again, the writer of the book was the Apostle Paul. It was around 55 after the death of Christ. And the location, it was at the city of Corinth at the port near Athens in Greece. And the audience, it was the Corinthian church, which, which was mostly made up of, you know, new believers because they were not used to the ways. They didn't grow up in the law. They didn't have any fear of that. And the issues in the current society, the people around them, there was a lot, a lot of idolatry going on. They had 12 temples where they go and worship idols. No wonder, you know, I can't even tell you, oh, peace, God must have been with this thing. And sexual immorality and issues inside the church now, they were divided. It was disorder. It, they were, there was jealousy in the church. So the purpose of the letter, Paul rebuke and solve the problems and offer solutions to them and teach them how to live for Christ in the corrupt society. Does the background story make sense so far? Do you guys, are you guys getting like a, basic understanding of what was going on. And when you go and read this book of um, Corinthians, when you read certain things, you will understand the mindset of what was going on at the time. And maybe you will read something and you will not understand, but because you know what was going on, it will make sense why he was saying certain things he was saying. So this is just for you, to, for you guys on your personal time. You can go back and read this whole chapter. I promise it's a good read. But are you guys with me so far? Is the background story making sense to you? Yeah, definitely. All right, wonderful. So now let's go back into the chapter, the story that we have, right? Now look at verse two. It says, you know that you were pagans. Now I'm going to read this to you. And because you know the story, 
let's see if you guys um don't see it in a different light as opposed to when you, you know we, we just read it and we didn't have a clue what was going on what was the purpose or anything like that now about the gifts of the spirit brothers and sisters i do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant you know that when you were pagans, that means you used to be part of that life we just described now. Somehow you were influenced by the idols, which means they used to go to that temple of Aphrodite and do the exact same thing. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, one quick inference we can make they will have false prophets, right? There will be people who don't have the Holy Spirit and they will just come and act like they were part of the church and act like, you know, they have the Holy Spirit, but except they will not promote the name of Jesus. They will say, quote unquote, Jesus be cursed. And they will act like they in the church, they in the leadership, they will be anywhere in the church. They will be people of influence. So now Paul is saying, don't get it twisted. You know, no one, who has the Holy Spirit is never going to talk bad about Jesus. The only, if you can say Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit has to empower you. So he was making the distinction because these people are idolaters. They will hear from evil spirits. There will be witches acting like they have the Holy Spirit. There will be false prophets, false teachers. So he's making the distinction. And he said, there are different kinds of gifts. This is something we're going to see just in a few seconds. There are different kinds of gifts. Now we're going to see what are different gifts, but it's, it, it doesn't matter how many kinds of gifts that we have. They all come from the Holy Spirit. I should have put that in red. There are different kinds of spirit, but the Holy Spirit, they all belong to them, to him. And is the one that give them to who he choose. Verse five. There are different kinds of service. It means there are different departments in the church. Some people are ushers, some people are the cleaning ministry. It's so many different things. But it's, it doesn't matter how many departments that we have. We are here to serve the same God. And there are different kinds of working, different kinds of, I would say, ministry, different kinds of missions. But all of of them are working for the same God. He's saying, he's basically saying that it's many of us. It's many different things going on. It's many things that need to be done. But don't get it twisted. You guys should not be divided because you all are working for one kingdom. We all have the same boss. We all have the same father. So he was addressing the division that was going on in the church. Are you guys with me so far? I don't want to move forward and lose anyone. I'm with you, Kirby. All right, all right, all right. Great. So now, now to each one, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. It means that the gifts that you receive from the Holy Spirit, it is not for yourself. It is not for you to brag. It is not for you to become the next Beyonce, to become a diva, to be a superstar. It is given for the others. You will hear often elders are saying, your gifts is not for you. Now, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good, which means for the church. So one is given, now we're going to get into the details of the different gifts. You guys pay attention because some of this is going to relate to you. As I'm going to read this, look inside of your habits, the things that you do, the things that you are inclined to, to see that, hey, this might be me right here, because trust me, if you are a Christian, you might have at least one of those, one of those. Even if you do not discover, you have yet to discover it, but you will see that's something that you are leaning to it. If you see that you tend to do these things, nine times out of 10, you might have this gift. It's just a matter or not to activate it. Make sense? So, yes. great. To one is given, to one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. That's number one, a gift of wisdom. That's one of the gifts of the spirit. To another, a message of knowledge, a gift of knowledge. That's number two, 
by the same spirit, it doesn't want you to be confused and think, oh, because you know they are pagans and they serve like I don't know a thousand spirit. They don't they don't want you to. He doesn't want them to think that hey, you get this from left, you get this from about Aphrodite, you get this from Apollo, and then you get this from Hermes or whatever. He wants is is taking his time right here because he knows he's speaking to pagans or former pagans, I should say. He say one, the gift of wisdom. Two, gift of knowledge by the same spirit. And by the same spirit, another, the gift of healing. To another, the gift of miraculous powers. The gift of miracles, like, you know, Apostle Paul, these people, like their shadow was raising people from the dead. People were sick. So that, to, ha to, to literally have miracles happen. And number five, we have the gift of prophecy, which is a very common one. To another, distinguishing between spirits, which means discernment, the spirit of discernment. Now, it's important that he says that. To another, distinguishing between spirits. <laughs> it simply means that there will be people who do not have the Holy Spirit, but that will fake it. They will pray like they have the Holy Spirit. They will say the exact words. They will say the right words. They will pray the scripture. They will know scripture. They will say Jesus is Lord, yet it is a familiar spirit. So I say there are some people that have discernments. They will know the spirit of God from any other evil spirit. So I think we're on number six now. And he said to another, the speaking in tongues, which is familiar. I, I believe that most of us on here, we speak in tongues. So this is a gift from the Holy Spirit as well. And now the interpretation of tongues. When you speak in tongues, there are people the Holy Spirit can empower and show them what you're saying. They will give them the ability to interpret the tongues. And this is how the church will be edified. And now I think we're up to like, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe nine, nine gifts. There are more, guys. This is just some that he explained on this test, uh, on this chapter. I would down a little bit more for you. And we're going to see that a little bit down the line as we're going to do a breakdown. But if you want to take notes, you can find more in Romans 12, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. And verse 11, he say, all these are the work of one in the same spirit. All these nine gifts, one spirit gives them. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. In other words, he says, he gives them to whoever he chooses. There's nothing you can do to force the Holy Spirit to give you a gift. There's nothing you can do to acquire it. There's no magic formula, nothing. The Holy Spirit gives them to you. But now I can sense another question coming. Well, you know, if the Holy Spirit is the one that chooses who you want to give it to, then, you know, maybe I want it, then I, 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 how could I get it? I don't even need to ask because he might not give it to me. That would be wrong. Because, hold up, guys. <clears throat> and 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 is the same chapter because it's literally giving them a lesson. I mean, in the same book. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. He's encouraging you to want the gifts. If you don't have it, it is not wrong for you to want it. It is not wrong for you to ask for it. It's not saying just kind of want it. It's a eagerly. That means with excitement, with tenacity. You can pray about it because some people will say, well, you know, if I deserved it, if it was for me, if God saw that I wanted it, he would have just given it to me. No. If you want the gift of healing, you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of healing. Yet, it is his decision. According to the plans of God for your life, is that going to be a good fit? And let me tell you this also. If you desire a specific gift, it is mostly because you already have it. I'm going to repeat this again. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. If you desire a gift, if you are drawn to a gift, most of the time it's because it's already in you. It's just not activated yet. For example, for instance, The gifts of healing. If when you see people are sick and you have compassion towards them, you want to help them feel better. For instance, those, those who go in the nursing field, 
if you when you when you are in bedside and you see people you know they don't feel good you always act as have compassion towards them you want to help them feel better you do above and beyond and beyond your job requirement to make sure they feel better now you might have that gift of healing if you don't see it in your life it is okay for you to ask the holy spirit yet you cannot force him to give it to you you can ask and he might give it to you because the bible said you have not because you ask not am i making sense so far guys i do not want you to be confused if you have questions i'll stop right now to think about two questions it makes sense all right perfect this is easier than i expected thank you god <laughs> <laughs> all right so this was a breakdown um there are more to it and i also don't want you to confuse the gifts of the spirit with the fruits of the spirit it is not the same thing i'm not gonna go into details but let's go into the gifts of the spirit i know there are some of you you know that are new and that i might have to do this teaching over i wouldn't mind you guys can reach out to the leadership and we can plan it you can see some of the leaders on the chat and then you can talk to them we can plan that for you if you would like to know about that. But right now, we got to stay on schedule. The gifts of the spirit. Like we said, first, wisdom, lady wisdom. And we know the guys, the guy who had the most of this it was Solomon. No one will have ever more and no one in this story had more wisdom than he. Well, another guy that we could say, Lucifer. Yes, Lucifer. Before the fall. He had a lot of wisdom because God gave it to him. And another guy that had a lot of wisdom, Daniel. Daniel had a lot of wisdom. He had all kind of knowledge and all kind of different things. Joseph had a lot of wisdom, especially when it came to finances. So what is wisdom? The gift of wisdom. It is the ability to apply knowledge and insight. I know this doesn't make sense too much yet, but hold on with me just a second because I highlighted wisdom and knowledge because um, they're kind of similar, but there's just a slight difference to it. Knowledge. Knowledge is the ability to accumulate and grasp information. So now, what is the difference between the two? Huh? Can anybody tell me the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Right. So what I feel like ability, yeah, ability to apply knowledge and insight. So like maybe like you have, um, well, I feel like I want to start with knowledge first, the ability to accumulate and grasp information. So accumulate means to like obtain. So mm -hmm. the ability to like obtain a knowledge and grasp what they're saying. So like when you grasp something in a class that so you understand that you comprehend it. So mm -hmm. once you have wisdom, you're, if you have wisdom, then you're able to then maybe, um, go further deeper into that knowledge because you could have knowledge but then wisdom goes a little bit deeper it probably will tap into like a different like realm or give you like a different way of thinking of things instead of interpreting it very literal so i feel like wisdom is more i mean knowledge is more so like textbook like mm -hmm. as it, and wisdom is more so interpretation that that is a very good explanation thank you anybody else want to add the two cents we can have somebody else share their opinion on that real quick you can come forward. Thank you, Barry. What's that question again, Kirby? Uh, the question was that what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? I agree with Barry with the knowledge point. Um, and as far as wisdom, wisdom, it, it is revelation, but it can only come from God. Wisdom can only come from God. Well, I take that back. There are, there are three forms of wisdom. There mm -hmm. is the wisdom of man. There is the mm -hmm. wisdom of age of ancient days. And then there's the wisdom of God. So that's how mm -hmm. wisdom um, is broken down. Mm -hmm. and, um, and like I said, the, the true wisdom come from God. It, it only can come from him. Amen. Yes, go ahead, Connelly. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so for knowledge, I feel like it's more something that's like studied. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense like 
a storage of information while wisdom is deeper to it and it's like more of an insight and understanding and accepting all right we can we can we can shut down the course you guys got it we like, like you you all can graduate right now class over class dismissed Ah, well, I was just kidding. The Holy Spirit will put me on the grill. But you guys, you guys got it. Pretty much that's what it is. But the only, I mean, you guys hit it right on the nail and you all were right. So just to put it in context, knowledge is simply information, good or bad. Like you guys, some of you said, you know, textbook, you just learn about something. But it doesn't really mean that you know how to use that knowledge. So wisdom is like a healthy dosage, right? It's like the ability to effectively put that knowledge to work with sound judgment. A good example, let's say a doctor, right? He went to school for about 10 to 12 years and he got a PhD. That's a lot of knowledge. That's a lot of information. Yet it makes a lot of poor life decisions. You know, you can have a lot of knowledge, but you don't have wisdom. It can make because there are people who make like 200,000 a year, but they still in debt. They spend their money unwisely. So you can have knowledge, but your knowledge is just information. But now when you have wisdom, you have better judgment. So that's what I would say the difference is. Everybody agree on that? That's a no. Oh, you guys are fixed. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, and we have faith. Faith is a gift because believe it or not, it's not that easy to have faith. Because when you're talking about faith, we're talking about the same kind of faith that Abraham had to trust God so much that he was gonna kill his son. Can't imagine that, huh? So faith is a gift and we have the gift of healing, powers, prophecy, discernment the tongues the interpretation of tongues and i put down the reference and also i'm going to share that in the group chat so you guys can keep it if you want to go over it and we have the gift of service those are the additional ones that were not listed in um in corinthians those are found in Romans chapter 12 gift of service do you know there are people they cannot help people i mean like when people ask them for a favor they like, oh no, again, they be like so mad. There's a lot of people who are not courteous. There are people who are not patient to, to be servants. There are people who just don't have the heart of a servant. And there's the gift of teaching because again, it goes back. You can know the information and you can have the knowledge, yet you cannot translate that knowledge to somebody else. I'm gonna repeat that again. There are people who are very good at math, they have the knowledge, they have the formulas, and they have the wisdom. They can apply it, use the math to build a house, become architects, yet they cannot explain to their kids how to do a math problem. Because the teaching also, it's a gift because you have to understand that God will give you that gift to understand psychology and depends on your audience to break it down so the person can understand it. So there's a gift of teaching and there's a gift of encouragement. There are people, when they speak to you, when you're going through something, it just feel like, thank God. And it just feel like a relief. And oh, this is so common because me too, I love these guys, right? Um, guys like E.T., like Billy Osbrook, you know, Les Bryant. Uh, what was this other guy named? Tony Robbins, Les, uh, Les Brown. These are motivational speakers, right? They can give you words of encouragement. This is also a gift because not everybody can do it. There are people who suck at pep talks, right? They'll be like, oh yeah, you know, do better. Something like that. You Somebody, your kid just fell. He tried so hard to make it to the basketball team and he didn't make it. And instead of you say, oh man, great job, man. You did, you did awesome. And they just come out some like, oh, okay, you almost got it, you know, do better next time. So, you know, that would, that would suck. You, if you were a parent and you did that, you will be fine. And there's the gift of giving. Oh my God, this must be one of the hardest. Giving, giving. Why is it so hard for people to give? First of all, it's the spirit that stops people from giving, right? But for you to give, 
you have to have the heart of giving. You have to know that you have received everything that you have from God. And you received it freely. You receive your salvation for free. And the Bible says freely you have received, freely you must give. It's not easy to give because people will live in scarcity. They're like, oh man, if I give this person this and I won't have for myself, they live in fear of tomorrow. So they might have that kind of money there, but they feel like, oh, yo, I don't want to give this person my money. Not necessarily because they are selfish, but because they be like, man, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. I don't know if I give this kind of money, I'm going to have it back. I don't know how long it will take me. Little do you know, God always bless the givers. If you guys know Brother Dano on the line, he always give his testimony like that. When you give, God is always going to do provisions for you. God is always going to make provisions. But when you don't give, you literally shut the door to the blessings because you're not making room for more. And also, that's the gift of leadership. Some people are born to be followers. Matter of fact, the majority of people just follow people. <laughs> Great example, Instagram followers. Instagram what? Followers. There are people... We just hop on social media. They don't post nothing. They're like a ghost, but they just follow everything you do. So it is a common trend that people, you know, they just like to follow the trend. They do what people do. People come up with like a TikTok something and you see like a thousand people start doing it. You see, you know, the, it's a common thing. So for you to have the mindset of a leader, it's something that not only has to be a gift, but it's something you have to sharpen. It's something that you have to identify with. It's something that you really have to work on. And we have the gift of mercy. Man, there are people who are just ruthless. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. There are people who are just so uncompassionate. They have no empathy to our orders. They just don't care. They just like simply, I, I don't know any other ways to put it. They just don't care. But the Bible at multiple instances, when Jesus was going to do a miracle, they say he was filled with compassion. Jesus was what? Jesus was filled with compassion. Sometimes Jesus even cried. Jesus felt so bad that sometimes he even cried. If you cannot have mercy in your heart, like when you have the gift, it goes to a whole other level. But as a human being, you should have at least some modicum of compassion in your heart. You know, you, you got to have some compassion. But it is also a gift. Now, this was the breakdown of the gifts, right? The gifts of the spirit. Like I said, there are more. But now, what I want to do, I want you guys one at a time, you know, just to just... um. On mute your mic, we're going to have, I'm going to need the leadership help to do this so we can keep this in order. You guys going to raise your hand and then one by one, you're going to unmute and, and say which one of the gifts you think most apply to you. Because there's no way out of 19 of us and out of 12 of these gifts that there's none of them that apply to you. Matter of fact, there could be more than one that you feel like apply to you. It could be faith. It could be discernment. It could be um, gift of service, giving. One person can have more than one. So you guys going to go ahead and unmute your mic and say all the gifts that you say that you feel like pertain to you, either that you desire or that you already have. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the exercise, we're just going to pray about it as a whole to see the manifestation of these gifts. So you guys go ahead and lift your hand up. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Zoom setting, if you go all the way down to the right, you're going to see three little dots. It says more. And then you're going to see the option raise hand right there underneath the settings. So you guys go ahead and do that so we can keep this in order so everybody doesn't speak on top. All right, great. You guys already got it. If there's some of you who don't know how to do it, you can reach for assistance in the group chat. One of the leaders is going to help you. All right. So we have Tiki first. Go ahead and pick your gifts. I have faith. Mm -hmm. Tongues. Mm -hmm. 
Giving. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Mm -hmm. Gift of mercy. Mercy, five. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Nikki. Um, let's say I have prophecy because I have dreams. Mm -hmm. um, discernment. Mm -hmm. Encouragement. You say encouragement? Yes. Okay, yeah. I speak on what I've been through. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that last one. Leadership? Oh, you said that already. All right. So I have that, faith. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if healing, I, I by telling through my story, I, I don't know. The the healing is more so like um when it when it pertains to sickness like if you pray for somebody will that sickness go away will they be healed this is um the healing that applies in this chapter here. Just interceding. Well, when you intercede on their behalf, let's say somebody is sick, right, and you intercede for them, let's say they have a major headache. If you pray for them as a result of your prayer, will the spirit of headache go away? So, so, so that's what that applies here. Yes, so, all right. So what you're going to do, Tiki, you're going to write down all your gifts in the chat, and then we're going to move forward from there. And also, if you have questions and you're not understanding something clearly, you can reach out to one of the leaders. Kadia, are you next? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, I start off by saying thank you guys once again for having a, this Bible study. Um, the gifts of spirit that I feel that I possess would be prophecy, um, mm -hmm. gifts of service, giving, mm -hmm. encouragement. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that out to me the most. All right. All right. Perfect. Go ahead and write that. You can um, reach out to one of the leaders. You'll see them here. We have Jenny. For those of you who don't know them, we have Jenny. We have Didi. Vanessa, Dono, and I don't know if Sister Mozir and Sister Mahanik. So if you need help and they can help you record your gifts too, so that way we can move forward from there. Is that Tina? Is that Tina? Is that Tina? <laughs> it's me. It's Martine. Mart it's Martine. Oh, I, I it, it changed your name. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but I like Tina. Um, so I wouldn't say I have all this. I definitely don't. I, I don't know if I've tapped into it, but I would say I'm very compassionate. Mm -hmm. um to um and of course to people not everybody but you know my friends of course and mm -hmm. um uh gifts of i want to say giving i'm very mm -hmm. giving when it comes to my friends or i'm there when they need me and stuff like that so those are the only two that i would say all right go ahead and write that um in the chat and uh thank you for sharing and also now mm -hmm. we have tatiana Kari, before you go forward, um, question. Jenny, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Question. Are you, is this in regards to what they actually have versus if you might, like, you know, sometimes God can <clears throat> use you in a moment of, like, for instance, you pray for somebody and they be healing, but that doesn't necessarily.